Okay, now we're going to be reassembling the motor, and these are your rings, and we're going to put it back together. These three are your oil rings, the two thin ones and the roughly one, and these are your compression rings. What we will do, we will take a compression ring, put it in top of the cylinder, and to check the end gap, put it in. We'll use the piston and push, push it down so it's nice and level, and then we will mic it and make sure the end gap is correct. And there you go, we have about eight thousandths, which is correct. Okay, now we're going to be installing the rings on the piston. I always start out with the bottom ring first, which is the oil rings. And when you're installing them, you want to make sure the, end, the ends of the rings do not all line up with each other. Oh, and you start at one end and you work the ring all the way around till it goes in nice and even, all the way around. Okay, now that the rings are installed, I went ahead and installed the piston into the cylinder and I did put the clip into the piston first. That way I can put the whole thing together as a whole and then slide the wrist pin in and put the clip on instead of trying to wiggle the cylinder over the piston. And make sure when you're installing the piston that the intake is going up towards the cam tensioner. Okay, now I've installed my new base gasket. Now I hold my cam chain out like this. I am going to slide my cylinder over the head studs. And I have to make sure you have your dowel pins in. Now that I line my rod and my piston up, I'm going to go ahead and slide the pin in. I got to come on that side, Jim. Now that I got the pin all the way in, I'm going to go ahead and put the clip into the groove. Okay, now that I have my cylinder on, I'm going to go ahead and make sure my timing marks are lined up. With this trigger right here and this notch right here, you line these two up and that should be top dead center. And now I am going to install my new head gasket. Just slide it over like this. And Okay, now that I have my head gasket on and both of my cam chain tensioners in place, I will go ahead and slide the head on. And the two studs go up for the intake goes up. Make sure you slide your cam chain through. Okay. I am going to install the two side head bolts, that way I can locate the, ham in, the cam in the right position, okay? And I only lightly torque them down to keep it all together.
Now since I got that, now I will install the cam with these two centers level with this and this dot will come straight up across here. Now with the cam temporarily installed, these two holes should be lined with the top of the head and this hole should be facing me. And now I will go ahead and put on the valve train. And on the valve train there will be an EX, that stands for exhaust, so you want to turn it over and make sure the exhaust goes down. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and install my head bolts. And I just do them finger tight for right now. Okay, now I will torque down the head bolts to 20 foot pounds with a torque wrench. But right okay, now, now I'm going to install the can chain tensioner, and you must remove this Phillips right here. And then, you with a flat nose screwdriver, you turn this backwards like this to pull the tension off of it to install it. And you hold it together, Take the tension off of it, and you make sure you hold on your screwdriver, hold on to the cam chain tensioner and you install it like this. Okay, now that the six millimeter bolts are tight, I will let go of the screwdriver and it'll adjust the cam chain. Okay, now that the head is on and the cam chain tensioner is in, I'm going to go ahead and adjust the valves. You're going to need a 9mm wrench. Just break them loose like that. And the intake should be set about 3 thousandths. I will get my fiddler's gauge and shove it under there to check it. Okay, I will lock it down now and then tighten it. Okay, there you go. So now I'm going to adjust the exhaust valve once again with a 90 millimeter. This one's a little tight, so I'm going to loosen it up. Three millimeters. And then I'll lock it down. Tighten it up and it will be good. Okay, now the final step, we're going to reinstall the valve cover. And you want to turn it over and make sure the rubber O-ring that seals it is in good shape, which this one is. So now we're just going to go ahead and install it.